Right, on the sand. In the background. Frogs. Maybe after last night, it's a one-legged frog. And it's an old railway line. And so that's probably why it's uh, just a straight line all the way. It's been like this, and it's probably going to, might continue. I might take a detour because it's, uh, it's not very interesting. Definitely not cool today, but uh, the road is uh, monotonous. I'm leaving Cluny. Bonjour, monsieur. I was woken up last night at about 2.30 with quite a bit of uh, thunder, rain, and uh, didn't sleep much after that. the sound of the TVR. Oh, this will be interesting. The weather is wonderful for walking because it's overcast. It's a bit damp, but uh, apart from that, it's uh, pretty good for walking. And going up here, I was so pleased with my walking sticks because when I use them going up hill, I can feel they take the strain off my foot, my ankle and lower leg in particular. It is very picturesque up here. I've just had my lunch and uh, none of the ants in my room last night ate any of it. But ants is something. Rather that than the rat that tried to get into my room the night before. <laughs> When you like me, walk these trails and tracks and don't meet anybody. Well, I met one man 
local man out today, just out for a walk. And apart from that, it's been uh, very quiet. And that's more than 20 kilometers. And then you have a feeling that I'm the only one using this. But the amazing part is that this route, route de Saint-Jacques, which continues all the way to uh, Compostela, is a route where people have been doing exactly the same journey for centuries. I've uh, come to feel the challenges now. I got a tendonitis and uh, a summer cold, as well as the problem with the foot. So uh, I'm definitely uh, challenged. And today is going to be not the longest, but one of the hardest days because I'm going to climb about 1100 meters and I'm going to descend about 800 meters and yesterday oh I was so happy when I was at my destination and normally I buy the supplies for the following day when I get to where I'm going to stay overnight but this was such a small place that uh, there were no shops and I was the only one staying in this little hotel. She was such a kind soul. And she provided for me uh, in every way possible. She made a four course meal for me in the evening, even though I was the only person there. And as I couldn't buy things for today, she supplied me with uh, water, locally made, goat's cheese and uh, an apple and uh, baguette as I arrived she asked if I needed anything washing because she was washing her clothes anyway and if I needed something to go into the washing machine as well uh, it was wonderful that was just what I needed I've seen a fox, I've seen birds of prey, I've seen a squirrel, a red one, walking on paths like this for a great amount of time each day. Uh, you can see why it is almost impossible not to strain an ankle. This is very difficult to prepare for this sort of thing. I would sure hope that there'd been a chiropractor around now to have a look at my ankle. Even though this climbing is challenging, I quite enjoy climbing. This is where I'm very pleased 
about my walking sticks because it helps me to get uh, up these climbs with a bit more balance and without having to take too many risks. An overexerted ankle is not happy with all these awkward angles it has to get into, but uh, this is the way. As we all know, the devil is in the detail. And uh, I thought I was very well prepared for this trip. The first part, Burgundy. I have uh, read books, I have scoured the internet, I have found wine growers that I wanted to visit. I made some um, arrangements in advance because I knew it was going to be difficult to uh, get a chance to, uh, to get into some of these places. That part has worked beautiful. My French was not up to scratch. I haven't had any French done anything since my my A-levels really, which is donkey's years ago. And going on this trip, I decided to uh, resuscitate my French. And the last six months, I've been listening to podcasts daily to uh, just to listen to the language. And I visited a local Frenchman. He's a chef and uh, he brews beer as well and a very, very, very nice man to visit. And I've seen him about five times where we've been talking French for a couple of hours. Um, all this has done that I don't have to translate anything when I listen to the French people speak. And that means that I don't have to use energy on translating and what did they say and then I'm 15 sentences behind. I could just listen and understand. I'd like to recommend um, the podcasts that I have been using and it's called Inner French. You can check it out on the internet. That part I have been very, very pleased with, usually. I am, have got no problems walking 30 kilometers, uh, but on these narrow roads filled with stones and rocks and you can't help but uh, wriggle on your uh, ankle, uh, I've overexerted myself. I'll carry on because even though it's a challenge in a way that I didn't foresee, um, I'm still very happy about this trip. I am um, I'm enjoying every step of the way. This is the first time that the uh, app hasn't shown me the right way, so to speak, because uh, I've already climbed a fence like this. I've been in the middle of a forest without any trails. Not the most well-marked trail I've been following, but I think I will uh, make my own way. Thank you. 
just enjoying today's lunch made yesterday and um, I'm about 18 kilometers into today's walk I met a man in a big machine pulling trees out of the wood and I met two cyclists and that's it for today we're out here I'm walking in the woods mostly well 90% of the time at the moment um, it's nice and shady but when you come to a crossroad you just don't know which way to go always and if you're used to doing the Camino in Spain or Portugal and you're used to all the yellow marking markings the arrows telling you which way to go it's not like that here um, so without this app I would have been very lost in the woods regarding my walking shoes I've been able to patch the inside of the lining up and I use some compete on my heel um, and that means that I have absolutely no pain from walking now. I'm still a bit surprised about Echo's Echo shoes um, customer complaints department because they asked me to write to them and I did <clears throat> and I asked them a couple of questions and all I heard back was the uh, well the echo of silence so to speak um, I would definitely expect a pair of uh, fairly expensive uh, hiking shoes to last longer than a prawn sandwich they wrote to me what did I think of their service um, and I answered it as honestly as I could I think it might be even better for them if they just have a customer complaints department where you, where you call in um, and they have an answering phone and it will say if you are very happy press 1 if you are extremely happy press 2 if you are over the moon press 3 if you are ecstatic about our service, press four. If you want to donate all your inheritance to us, press five. Might be easier that way. And they get uh, all the answers they want. Where I stayed last night, they made me a little snack for um, before lunch and uh, three different cheeses, not bad. The walk this morning, well, I again waved at the two early morning juggers and, uh, and that's it so far and I've been on my way for about three, three and a half hours now. It's 
started raining. The rain lasted about 15 minutes. It just cleared the air. There wasn't much in it. A little bit about the pros and cons of, uh, of where to stay on a journey like this. Um, tonight and the last three nights I have stayed in uh, small hotels. That is very convenient because uh, when you reach your destination you just check in. I eat my evening meal here, I have my breakfast in the morning. They even make a sandwich for me and make sure I've got some water for tomorrow's uh, hiking as well. The downside about staying in a small hotel is that uh, when I arrive, um, I speak to the receptionist and tonight I'll probably speak to the waiter and that might be all for today. So I don't get to practice my French. Um, and as everybody else, I'm a social animal uh, and even though I like my own company, it's quite nice to be with other people as well. At the beginning, I stayed mainly at private people's homes and that was very, very good for me uh, because I get to see how the French live. Um, I get to see a French <coughs> household from the inside. Um, I get to practice my French. I um, have met some very, very nice people, I must say, and that I've enjoyed tremendously. The downside of that is that these people do not run a hotel. Uh, they work, so sometimes I'm not able to get in until about 6 o'clock p.m. And last night, I found this uh, tick on my leg, very small tick. Uh, I had a pair of tweezers and removed it, I thought. When I looked closely, I could see it was a little bit of its head still inside my leg. So I used my uh, nail cutters and uh, hopefully get it all out. I looked at it again and I thought, ah, there's still a little bit left. So I went to the local GP and uh, she was very obliging and uh, now everything has been removed and I'm very pleased about that. very alive with uh, butterflies, bees, wasps. There are butterflies. Every day, 
with every step I take, um, I feel my the inside of my ankle. Um, I usually get a little bit of a crisis midday because it just gets so painful that uh, I think, well, should I take a taxi from here? But most days there have been absolutely no towns. It's just been through big forests and uh, nowhere to, to take a taxi from. And my thinking is, well, for each step I take, there's one step less before I, I reach my destination for the day. Today, I'm actually going through four towns. So therefore, I thought, well, I can start and then I'll see how it goes. And then if, it, if need be, I'll see if I can take a taxi. The reason for me continuing is um, compassion. Because um, yesterday, the GP just took me in and removed that last bit of the uh, tick. Yesterday, when I booked in at the hotel, uh, they said to me, what time would you like your breakfast? And when I said quarter past five, they looked at me and said, no, 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 can't, can't possibly do that. The first breakfast is at seven. And I said, well, I don't require a lot. If you just have um, some bread and some jam and uh, I can bring it to my room and then I won't uh, disturb anybody, then I'll be happy. And then the mood changed. Uh, the lady in reception then wanted to show me how each and every machine worked in uh, the breakfast room. Um, and she called the local baker. <laughs> and made arrangements for him to come over with some bread for me. So this morning, quarter past five, the baker arrived in his gear and he had a freshly made um, baguette. He had freshly made croissant, uh, one of them with uh, chocolate and the other one with a normal one. I said, on my trip today, he also brought me a little special thing. He's, uh, He's a baker and a chocolate chip, and uh, I know this doesn't look very good maybe on, on this, but it's the thought, oh, yeah, here we are. Um, he thought, well, he should, um, he should have a good day. And that is one of the reasons that I carry on, because there is compassion. Another reason is that the landscape and the things I see, it gets me high every time. So there's a lot of reason for being here and uh, I'm trying not to be stupid or stubborn. I'm just enjoying this so much that I, I'd hate to give it up. today reached 32 degrees so it was a long walk it was a very hot walk and uh, like the other days it wasn't mainly in forest and the wind helped me to uh, keep myself a bit cool for the first two-thirds of the way I uh, felt my ankle However, during the last part of it, it seems to uh, it seemed just to get better. And surprisingly, tonight the ankle feels better than it has done for quite a few days. And my summer cold has uh, decided to leave me.
down there is today's destination, a city, Songtichin. It's Saturday, I'm on my way to Sandichen and it's actually my third week going now. It has been um, a strange week in as much as I have um, had this problem with uh, my walking shoe, which I've solved. I had this summer cold, which is behind me. And then there's this swelling on the inside of my ankle. But as of yesterday, it got better. And today I haven't taken any medication. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Because before I went on this journey, I decided to um, book each and every single night's stay in advance, because I did not want to spend an hour or two walking to and fro to find a place to sleep. And at some stage this week, I thought, well, maybe I was a bit optimistic about the length uh, between the, uh, the stopovers. And now for each day, I just feel stronger. So I'm very, very pleased about that. I'm looking forward to, uh, to continuing my journey tomorrow. This is downtown Saint Vichin at 5.30 on a Saturday, sorry, Sunday morning. Um, probably a bit more lively here yesterday. Today is so far going to be the hottest day that I'm walking and um, it's going to be one of the hardest days as well. And that's why I got up at 4.30 to get ready. A few people are still out. I think they're uh, heading home from last night's party.
apart from a number of dogs uh, greeting me on my way, um, and apart from the younger people I met coming home from town, it was Saturday yesterday, um, I haven't met anybody until my lunch. I came to a small town and they had a, uh, a market, so I bought myself a nice juicy peach, uh, sitting in front of the church, looking at the people doing their local shopping, and uh, afterwards I uh, felt that I, it's going to be 33 degrees today, I needed some more liquid. So I went to the local bar to buy a lager shandy. And at the bar, I got talking to a, uh, a young Frenchman and uh, we talked about all sorts of things. And uh, he wanted to pay for my lager shandy because if I travel that far to walk in his region, the least he could do was to give me something to drink. Um, he offered me another one, but I said thank you, but uh, I'd better be on my way. So once again, I have uh, experienced some uh, very, very nice and friendly French people. Um, it grows on you. Bonjour, nice to see you. Yesterday's long and uh, hard walk went absolutely fine, I had no complaints. I managed to get to my destination before the rain started. Uh, we had thunder and a fair amount of rain last night and that um, just, you can feel that this morning because uh, it's much more damp and of course yesterday was Sunday and everything in France closes down on a Sunday, so you can't buy bread or beverages or anything like that after about 12 or two o'clock. And um, the restaurants close in the evening, so you can't go for a meal either. I was lucky to get into um, a local bistro and uh, he made me a, uh, a plate of charcuterie and uh, I enjoyed that a lot. But today for my lunch, I haven't been able to buy any bread at all, uh, but it's only a short walk, so uh, I can manage four or five hours without anything to eat. Today, I've met um, an elderly gentleman attending his vegetable garden 
And uh, he asked me where I was going, and I told him. And he said, Mais monsieur, vous êtes perdu. <laughs> he was convinced that I was lost. Uh, I had to explain to him that I was not lost, I was just taking the scenic route. Today is a short walk, tomorrow will be a short walk, and the last two days will also be quite short. Hmm. This could get interesting. I hope not too interesting. Rain approaching. So it would be nice to get to my destination before uh, it all opens up.
Today's walk has been quite easy, in more the ways than one. Um, it wasn't very far, and there were markings all along the way showing me exactly where to go, so I didn't have to use my own GPS. It was a very pleasant walk, but the weather has changed dramatically since yesterday. There was this um, thunder without much rain, uh, but after that the temperatures dropped to about half of what they were. So I think the highs today have been about 17, which is uh, quite cool and I've had to wear a, um, a fleece jacket most of the day. Uh, this accommodation where I stay now is mainly for people doing the, uh, the Camino and um, there will usually be several people here um, staying overnight but I was lucky as they said tonight I'm the only one and uh, it will be nice and quiet um, but I'm used to that so that wasn't that won't bother me uh, the evening meal I will have with the, with the family and uh, I'm quite looking forward to that. Tomorrow is my last day of hiking and um, looking back, if I had to do this trip again, what would I have done differently? Well, I was very pleased that I have spent as much time as I have preparing uh, for the Burgundy wine area and the Champagne wine area without that. It would definitely not have been quite the same for the first fortnight. Language-wise, I'm very pleased that I spent the time, that I made the effort to try to uh, resuscitate my French because I'm in no, no way am I perfect, but um, it has paid dividend to, uh, to do this way because I can converse with them in their own language and I think they might be a little bit more open-minded that way as well. My accommodation, well, I booked everything in advance uh, before I left and <laughs> at one stage I thought, well, you've been a bit too optimistic here when my ankle and my foot played up, but in the end it worked out very, very well. And I have not, had I not had the challenges reaching my destination, um, it would not have been the same trip. So I'm actually pleased about that as well. The uh, mapping of every day has also been extremely good because I haven't had to spend a lot of time looking at uh, finding a map about where I am. The month of May. Yeah, that's the one I chose. And after that, I realized, I looked at the weather forecast, long-term and averages, and it turns out that May should be the wettest month for um, most of this journey that I have made. So uh, I, before I left, expected that I was going to need my raincoat a lot. So far, I've had 10 minutes of drizzle and 15 minutes of very light rain so i guess i might have been lucky this year another thing that i chose was that when i pull the plug i pull the plug on news as well so for the past month i've heard absolutely nothing um, i don't know about the corona situation I have no idea what, about what's going on in the Ukraine. I don't know what the stock market has done in May. 
I have heard no foreign news and I heard no domestic news. Everything has just been blanked out. All in all, I don't think I change any of the decisions I made um, because um, I planned this very much in detail and I'm also pleased that everything didn't go according to plan. If everything had been going according to plan, it would have been uh, less interesting, I'd say. And life is what happens when we're busy making other plans. So I'm very pleased that the, I've had the challenges. Um, and would I do it again? Absolutely. Would I change anything? No. about a lot of people when they go on a journey like this that they um, get to know their inner self it hasn't happened I've had plenty of time for long in-depth conversations with myself but every time each and every time uh, my mind has been distracting me distracting me in that way um, that there's something around me that takes my attention. It could be the smell, it could be something I watch, something I notice, something that's happening. Um, and I've just been living the moment. And I've been doing that each and every day. I've learned that I actually like my own company a lot. I'm very lucky to have a uh, understanding and loving wife who's encouraged me to do this. And uh, I look very much forward to going back. However, I am also enjoying each and every minute of this. And today I've noticed that I have slowed down my pace, uh, not due to any injuries, but for me, it's like reading a good book. I don't want to see the end. I don't want it to stop. Bonjour, Bonjour Monsieur.
And now I've arrived at uh, Le Puy en Velay, which is the very last stop on this journey. This is where a lot of Frenchmen start out on their journey towards um, the uh, Camino in Spain. And um, if I think about what has been the most spectacular on this trip, I must say that before I left, I had a preconceived idea about the French being uh, quite arrogant. And I must say that that has been, to sh been put to shame big time because I found them friendly, I found them approachable, I found them curious, uh, helpful, and I found that they are very uh, compassionate to a degree where I think it's just a part of their DNA. Apart from that, obviously the landscape, the amount of different animals, plants, birds uh, I've seen on this trip has made it quite special for me. Also that I have been doing it virtually without meeting anybody has been special um, because I've learned quite a few things about myself as well. And would I recommend a thing like this? Definitely. And I had to put it off due to the corona uh, ep epidemic. And if you want to do something like this, I'd say rather now than later, because one never knows what one's health is going to be like in the future. We don't know what the world is going to look like. Um, and that's why I think there's no time like the present. For me, it has been a remarkable journey and I'm very, very pleased that, um, that I did it. For me, this destination has not been the goal of this whole journey. The goal of the journey has been the journey. So I'm very pleased that I'm here, but I'm even more pleased with having made this trip.